The only thing worse than 40 seconds of logos is 40 seconds of silent logos. If you're gonna logo me to death, at least have the courtesy to consider the needs of my lonely lug holes. Interesting to me that a book called The Needle Game has a picture of a train on it. I don't typically judge books by their covers, but I will judge this one, especially since this almost shutterstock looking photo is so proudly displayed in Harlan's house. The light projects a strange shadow on Marta's cheek that I just can't place in the natural world. But it does kind of look like a microphone or a piece of film equipment, and I'm not sure how many opportunities I'll have to find sins in this, so gotcha! We're just gonna reintroduce ourselves as a formality. And because it's a movie and the audience is just meeting us for the first time. I'm going to record this just to make things easier. Elliot labels this recording Thromby, and I'm wondering why he didn't label it Linda Drysdale or Linda Thromby. He's going to be talking to multiple Thrombies today, just trying to help deal with the organization is all. Harlan started out with a rusty Smith Corona and built himself into one of the best-selling mystery writers of all time. Wow. Seems like all his kids are self-made overachievers. What exactly prompts this response from Lieutenant Elliot? Richard just said Harlan built himself from nothing, and the response is a somewhat subtle jab at the kids? Sure, Linda dubiously claimed her business was self-made, but that's not what prompts the comment. It sounds like something Elliot would have said if Walt tried to say he was a self-made man right after Linda's interview. Not changing your Windows XP default wallpaper. Although there are no windows that are open that a baseball could be thrown out of without breaking glass, that's exactly what happens. Sure, maybe there's a hidden window in this shot, but considering the ball's flight path relative to the yard where the detectives are walking, yeah, I'm going a long way for this sin. You have a regurgitative reaction to mistruth. Yes, vomit is a plot device in this extremely well-made movie. It will not be consistent, but man, isn't vomit fun? I think it's fun. Also, I'm stealing regurgitative reaction for the next time Disney announces a live-action remake. Big vomit. I bet that's an homage to Paul Giamatti's character in Howard Stern's Private Parts. You gotta be super smart to catch those Easter eggs, and I am super smart. I can't even say that with a straight face. Oh, have you seen her Insta? She's an influencer. I don't judge a police officer for knowing about influencers, but I do judge them for thinking that would have anything to do with their desire to not lose out on hundreds of thousands of dollars. Granted, but she lied to me. All three of them did. Who's all three? Benoit Blanc means Walt, Richard, and Joni, but Linda was part of the questioning too, as was Meg. I think what I'm nitpicking is you should be saying at least three of them did. Because this morning someone dodged a very important question. Who? Oh. Me. I've never heard someone pronoun game about themselves before. That's impressive. I don't even know if I should give the personal pronoun gaming a sin or a sin off. Oh wait, yes I do. Harlan, who came down for a midnight snack. Dad, go back to bed. This is the weirdest part of the plot that Harlan comes up with. I guess Harlan regularly tries to sneak midnight snacks and Walt would command him to go back to bed? How did Harlan know it would play out this way? Playing life like a game without consequence until you can't tell the difference between a stage prop and a real knife. I think this is fun foreshadowing of what happens later, but it's a super unusual description of someone's mindset. It's forced. I will now hereby call this foreshadowing. Like stone cold, Dad? Yes, your full symptoms in five sweats, disorientation, and- It's amazing to me that Harlan doesn't bother to wait for the symptoms to hatch this plot to give Marta an alibi. In fact, with six supposed minutes left, Harlan starts telling her what the plan is, and there's a lot of time before Marta leaves the room and he slits his own throat. So the fact that he doesn't feel the morphine or any side effects after five minutes should be a huge signal that he didn't overdose. And for the rest of this scene, he's clear, calm, collected. Wouldn't you stop to think maybe the 10 minutes is bullshit? And you have time for an ambulance? The ambulance would take at least 15 minutes to arrive, and then it'd be too late. Who says you even need an ambulance? How about driving him to the hospital? And yes, I understand the idea might be that he could possibly die anyway, but they don't even think of that option. And the only way is to climb the side trellis and come in through the trick hall window. It's hard to criticize a movie for putting in a secret passage for the movie's plot to work. Not only that, but a secret passage that you can access from the outside. But I'm the dickhead who wonders what Harlan would have come up with if the house didn't have it. Kind of amazing that during the questioning, this trick door didn't come up once. Marta knows about it, Ransom knows about it. You'd think the other family members would mention a trick door that somebody might have used, even if it's an open and shut case of suicide. Don't lie. Tell fragments of the truth. If her vomiting is a psychosomatic response to deception, then even shading the truth should trigger the same reaction. In fact, earlier she said that even thinking about lying makes her real. You can loophole the law all you want, but 
It's still much harder to loophole your own brain. And my cousin, who's a receptionist at the medical examiner's office. Because everybody needs a convenient connection to the plot threads in this movie, of course I know someone at the medical examiner's office. Okay, I've held off long enough on taking a sin off for the incredibly subtle discrimination and obliviousness of the family. They each casually mention a different country they think Martyr's from. Then they all drop in that they were outvoted in allowing her to the funeral. And they call her patronizing nicknames, but none of it is forced. This entire politics scene is a masterclass in making an almost subliminal point. The fact that he hands her his plate to take care of during this politics conversation, as if she's the maid or something, and the movie doesn't force it in our faces with a reaction shot or any kind of attention to it. It's brilliant filmmaking and the definition of trusting your audience. I stayed hoping to speak to you a little more. Which is why I positioned myself outside in the dark long after I was welcome here, hoping you might conveniently pop out for some air. I want you to be by my side for it. There is no reason to keep Marta around during the investigation, and the series of mishaps that occur afterwards will explain why you don't let civilians walk around with you during clue gathering. It's the biggest mistake Benoit makes, and luckily it doesn't hurt him or Marta in the process. Also, you're the only one who had nothing to gain from Holland's death. But there's no way for him to know that until the will is read, so I don't know how he can make that assumption. This guy is supposedly really good at his job, right? She's standing right at the door when Harlan slits his throat on the other side of the room. So how the f does a drop of blood end up on her shoe? Also, even if the blood somehow traveled all the way across the room and landed on her shoe, wouldn't it have dried brown by now, considering this happened so long ago? Also, also, now's as good a time as any to say that Anna de Armas got f***ing robbed for an Oscar nomination in this movie. Sure, but who would have been left out in her place, you might ask, and I'd say, why can't there be more nominees? And then this turns into a big Oscar debate. Anyway, her performance is worth a sin off. You think we could scan forward on there? Even if Blanc doesn't believe Marta killed Harlan and is absolutely sure she didn't, I still can't believe he lets her operate the VCR. Seems like a dedicated detective like Blanc would insist on doing it himself. That thing eats tapes like popcorn. The entire reason the detectives don't see Marta's car on the tape is because the security is antiquated and run by M. Emmett Walsh, who is 84 years old. And he's a terrific character actor. A legend. But f me, why even have security if it's like this? It's unbelievable how cheap this is. I'd think some of the crazier paranoid types that live in this house would have demanded a better security system. But mainly it illustrates again why Marta shouldn't be here. Also, if the VCR eats tapes like popcorn, why wouldn't you say this before putting the tape in? God damn. I can hang on to that. Is this movie really saying she erased the tape with a kitchen magnet? I mean, maybe the technology is so old that it would work, but M. Emmett Walsh said he had to use a magnetic degausser to do it. This is a fridge magnet! I'll continue to belabor the point. This is why you don't let people walk around and help you during investigations. This judge of character is a dog. Fall. I had an uncle who had about as much character as a half-eaten potato, and his dog worshipped him like he was the canine Christ. Dogs just know who feeds them. That's about it. I'm just going to be in the other room uh, setting up. Be ready in ten minutes. Then why did you do the universally accepted signal for five with your hand just now? Even if you were saying, wait here, it's needlessly confusing. Wait, unless it's a clue! Five fingers. There are five family members. Also, five fingers make a fist. Fisting! He died by fisting! Solve the case! Next! I hereby direct that all my assets, both liquid and otherwise, I leave in their entirety to Marta Cabrera. Who just happens to be here because for some reason she's being treated as an investigative assistant in solving the case of my death. Oh, the beauty and the drama of happenstance. The car decides not to start at the exact point you're trying to escape the scary monsters cliche. Also, this car won't start cliche is a huge driver of the plot, because now Ransom can save her and pretend to be her friend. Did he do something to her car? It's possible, I suppose, but we don't give benefits of the doubt here. Why would Marta trust Ransom here? I know she wants to escape, but certainly there's a room in the mansion to which she could escape and the officers could protect her from the badgering horde. Speaking of which, why are those officers even letting her go? Her motive just got a whole lot meatier, and they know something is up. Even Blanc would want her around to observe, to try and find out all about that terminal rainbow gravity he was talking about earlier. Marta, tell me everything. This should not work. Sure, Marta can't lie because she'll blow baked beans, but she doesn't have to even say a word here. There's no reason for her to trust Ransom, and even less reason for her to let the truth out. Good morning, Mrs. Thromby. Quick question. I'm not versed in the ins and outs of being a private investigator, but is Blanc here just loitering around this house every day, just accepted by everybody involved? The family? The police? Isn't this a conversation he could and should have had yesterday? The day before? I'm just saying his conversation seemed more space for dramatic story reveals than the efficiency and opportunity of his work. What? Yeah, seriously, what the hell is Walt doing all the way back here? Setting aside the timing of them bumping heads, how did he even know this exit was here? Or even where she lived at all? And if he's smart enough to find it, why aren't there press staked out back here as well? The twist is that Knives Out is the third I Know What You Did Last Summer movie. Okay, but this is a photocopy of just the header of a blood toxicology report on Harlan. 
Marta, this is going to show the morphine overdose. So here's the point in the movie where Harlan's sacrifice makes the least sense. Of course, a toxicology report would show that he had been injected with too much morphine if it actually happened. We could chalk this up to Harlan not having the time to consider every detail, and it was just a human mistake, and he even said there's probably something I'm forgetting. And it's perfectly fine for the movie, but if we didn't sin it, we wouldn't be us now, would we? Well, what about security cameras? Oh, yeah. You mean just outside a medical examiner's office, there's only one goddamn camera? Wouldn't there be multiple security cameras around this place? Including possibly a security guard? Seems like a very important place to allow one camera on the street to be the end all to security. Also, the camera went up in flames, but that doesn't mean the video it was recording isn't saved somewhere. Most security systems these days store to a cloud, so just pointing at a melted camera doesn't really indicate anything. There is one. I honestly don't understand why Ransom didn't just provide the meeting place and time on the blackmail note. He leaves all this to chance. He somehow knows that Marta will see the blackmail note and go immediately to his house where he can say, let's go to the medical examiner's office, which provides more conveniences and complications. Also, this email doesn't seem to have a subject, so how was she supposed to know it meant a meeting place and that it had anything to do with the blackmail note? Marta picked a fantastic road to try and outrun the cops, one of these highways where nobody else except the characters in this movie are driving. <laughs> There's zero chance that the cops in pursuit who were doing 80 miles an hour didn't just slam into Marta's car here. Get out. Is this Lakeith Stanfield's catchphrase? I'm beginning to think it's his I'll be back. How does Marta know she can walk through this hair color studio and walk out the back and walk through a rear entrance to the laundry? Maybe Ransom was smart enough to leave the back entrance open, but it feels like her only way of walking in would be through the front. Oh, Lord. How does Blanc know that the ambulance has anything to do with the case? I'm sorry. Since Ryan Johnson recently said Apple won't let villains use iPhones, we now know that Meg isn't the bad guy. Wait, is this our first case of the director has a character hold an apple to make sure the audience knows they aren't an asshole? My world no longer makes any sense! God, I am so rating Fran Stash after this. Jesus Christ, like just before Marta's about to confess to the family she killed Harlan, Meg just up and mentions Fran Stash. And thank God Fran said the words copy and stash just before she died. I know where the tox report is. Okay, so because Fran knows a receptionist at the medical examiner's office, she can just get her hands on a tox report? This might be the most suspect medical examiner's office in history. God, it took for f***ing ever for Blanc to start reading this tox report. Even if he thought he knew what it would say, wouldn't he have given it a look before Marta started speaking? You're a pack of vultures at the feast. Knives out, beaks bloody. Roll cutlery. But uh, just wondering, in this metaphor, do vultures have f***ing knives? Is that his word for talents? Get the family out. Yes, but not all of them. Why is he whispering here? They're all going to see Ransom when he comes in anyway. Secret secrets are no fun. Secret secrets only serve to delay the plot twist. I think that's how the saying goes, at least. It is not a donut hole, but a smaller donut with its own hole. And our donut is not a hole at all. <laughs> Does Blanc just happen to carry around blank labels with him in case he needs to cover medicine bottles for dramatic recreation that he didn't even know was going to happen? And if so, does he call them Blanc labels? You gave him the correct medication because you are a good nurse. Is she though? A good nurse would actually check the labels. A good nurse wouldn't panic when the mistake was made, but immediately call 911 and handle the symptoms as they present. A good nurse would administer CPR if a patient passed out until help arrived. And a good nurse wouldn't allow a patient to commit suicide, especially when it should be obvious that symptoms weren't presenting. Look, this is a brilliant little twist and a beautiful heartfelt moment, but I'm an asshole. And if you look a little closer, we see the asshole has its own smaller asshole within it just for these occasions. Ransom. Are you back again already? I feel like it's weird that Great Nana mistakes Marta for Ransom here. She's basically shown to be with it enough not to make this mistake. Besides, if she's mistaking Marta for Ransom, anybody could be Ransom, and it doesn't prove the case that Ransom was here. However, this time the dogs were outside. They barked, <laughs> weak and mad. No matter. You get the vows tomorrow. Yeah, but if you're Ransom, why would you chance this? Why wouldn't you go back out and buy some steaks to quiet the dogs? Because the next day, anything could happen to those vials and you may never get your chance to get them. I know, because back in 2014, I, you know, I've said too much. Now the circumstances are perfect for the anonymous hiring of me. You know a crime has been committed by Miss Cabrera. You need her to be caught for it. This feels like the weird case at the beginning of the Kenneth Branham murder on the Orient Express, where the chief inspector of the police stole the rubies and hired Hercule Poirot to solve the crime. If Blanc is this good at solving crimes, surely he could figure out stuff like maybe Ransom was involved. The very act of hiring him is suspicious activity that he'd want to get to the bottom of. And I admit, Ransom's probably not that bright. But if you're smart enough to do the things he did in this, certainly it would give you pause before you hired somebody the stature of Blanc. A lesser detective could have figured out what you wanted 
him maybe wouldn't have snooped into why he was hired. Everyone swarms in and there is no possible way you can get to Marta's medical bag to retrieve the vials. You must wait for your moment. The question for me is, why was Marta's medical bag left behind after the cops came in and did the investigation? They didn't think medicine was important in the suicide case? Don't you come near me. Don't come near me! I'm warning you! Man, I can't stand Fran's plan. If she thinks Ransom tried to kill Harlan, then surely he would stop at nothing to kill her in an empty laundromat. Why not tell him to deliver the money to a place where she could see him drop it off and give him very specific instructions so she could verify that he left it before she collected it? She didn't say, you did this. She said, you did this. You did this. Strange to me that the housekeeper who hates Ransom called him by the name he prefers the servants to call him, even though he's not around to hear it. Think Fran would call him Ransom behind his back. Or asshole, but not Hugh. Fran's alive? Oh yes. Fran, who will confirm this very story? Marta gets a call from the hospital about Fran's status, and this has got to be the first dead housekeeper ex machina moment in the history of film. Also, I wonder why she even gets the call at all. Just because she brought Fran to the hospital and doesn't grant her access to medical information. Doctor, that's great news. We'll be there soon. Thank you. Man, I would love to see this doctor's reaction to what Marta says here. He just told her that Fran is dead. Not sure if that's a sin for the movie, but f*** it. She's okay. She's ready to talk. Marta's body incorporates a nice two-minute delay on its response to this lie because... Reasons? That's right. Friends dead. To be clear, we're all celebrating the death of an innocent person because it means this asshole will go to jail longer. Just want to make sure that we're all on the same page here. And you just confessed to her murder. They record Ransom's confession on this phone, but Wagner has only been recording for 45 seconds. I guess he knew when to press play. Thank God. I think the normal moviegoer is supposed to be wondering if she's been stabbed, but I'm just wondering where did all the vomit that was on his face go? Also, why are the police allowing this little false knife comedy bit to happen when they were already leaping toward him 20 seconds ago because he just tried to kill her? Can I ask, when did you know I had something to do with Harlan's death? Oh, from the first moment you set foot in front of me. Yeah, but that little drop of blood could have been anybody's blood. It means f nothing. So the entire family is outside the house, but not Great Nana. Makes me wonder what happens to her after this. I'm sure Marta takes care of her, but the fact that she's absent from any shot at the end of this makes me wonder what truly happens to her. God, this last shot is probably my favorite thing ever. I'm removing five cents, mainly because I've been an unruly asshole to this fantastic film. Girlfriends barfed on boyfriends. Kids barfed on their parents. How are you doing? Not very good. Alone. You look lonely. I can fix that. Michael Myers murdered five people, and he's a human being we need to understand. I just buried my 85-year-old father who committed suicide. Why are you here? Now who's responsible? I say who's responsible for this unwarranted attack on my person? They're not our books, son. They're my books. We work in the same corporation doesn't mean we work in the same profession. It's unfair of me to keep you tethered. So once upon a time. Yeah, bitch! Magnets! Oh! Oh, wait. Double f***ing newsflash. Sig Manu is not going to want to hang out with us if we f***ing suck. Which, by the way, in case you're an idiot and need it spelled out for you, we f***ing suck so far. I, Harlan Thromby, being of sound mind and body and yada yada yada, I hereby direct that all my assets... One Timex digital watch broken, one unused prophylactic, one soiled. I leave in their entirety to Marta Cabrera. Em really doesn't mind you earning a little money on the side, Dryden. She'd just prefer it if it wasn't selling secrets. She didn't play your game. You slashed his face open, you left him bleeding in the street like a stuck pig, then you crushed his skull with a forklift and burned his hands off to erase the fingerprints. You'll never prove it. We have the nanny cam footage. Alice. So what do you have on me? Nothing. What, attempted murder? Do they give a Nobel Prize for attempted chemistry, do they? 